Hello world, welcome to the 88th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Uh, you'll notice that we've started today's video a little different. I'm showing off my Canon EOS 80D DSLR camera and we're going to start using this camera a lot more as we start to automate things in our home. But in today's video, we're going to be looking at the Bitcoin price movements and compare them to the S&P 500. Uh, using matplotlib like we did the Russell 2000 and the uh, yield curve. And so um, I initially invested in Bitcoin when it was around $265 and then I invested in other cryptocurrencies as well. And then um, I've sold out of it at various price points, maybe not as high as 20000 but I have sold at 1000 to 15000 And now I have a very small portion of cryptocurrencies in my portfolio. And uh, I originally invested in cryptocurrencies and specifically Bitcoin because I thought it was going to be a hedge against the S&P 500. So in today's video, we're going to look, does it truly, is it truly a hedge against the S&P 500? Does it move inversely proportional or oppositely of the S&P 500? And that's what we're going to check out. But before we do, please leave a comment below and tell me if you like this new camera and tell me how you like the quality. All right. Let's check it out. Okay, now we're back in the webcam. And so what we're going to do is we're going to run this program. But make sure you've watched my previous matplotlib um, stock market analysis videos. Because um, uh, when we get to the code, we're only going to discuss the Bitcoin stuff. So when we run this, you're going to see it download uh, the files that we need move them into a data folder, rename them, and then plot them. And so let's run this real quick so we can see. So as you notice, we have an empty data folder. Okay, so let's run this. And what it's going to do is it's going to go to Yahoo Finance and pull the S&P 500 and the Russell 2000. Now I can use requests to do this, but I haven't done that yet. Then it's going to go to Quandle and it's going to get the Treasury yield and the Bitcoin, the blockchain and dollar. Then it saves it to this data folder right here and renames each one of these with today's date. So I always know what was the last date of the file. Then it plots it. Now we've done this in the previous videos, so make sure you watch them. And what you're seeing now is the separate uh, data files uh, compared to the S&P 500. So in the previous videos, we implemented this radio button box to switch between the Russell 2000, which is in blue, the S&P 500 is in red, the yield curve, and then we drew this additional axis so you can see where zero is, so you can see where the yield curve goes inverted. And then now we have a Bitcoin. So right here we can see the S&P 500 versus Bitcoin. The S&P 500 is in red and the Bitcoin is in purple. Now I'm going to close out my face. Okay, and as you can see we're in Bitcoin and these change as we select the radio button. So we today we're going to discuss the relationship of the S&P 500 versus the Bitcoin. And matplotlib comes with its own zoom function. So uh, it was zero for most of, I would say, 2008 or nine, And then it started coming up here. And uh, the end of 2013 is when I bought it, roughly 265, like I mentioned in the introduction video. But let's just look at this block right here. So we're using matplotlib zoom function right here. And as you can see, the S&P 500 has had a nice run since practically 2009. If we zoomed out, you could see that. And it's a pretty good linear curve besides some of these dips. Bitcoin kind of started in around 2013, started climbing. But here in 2017, it really started to climb quickly. So that's kind of a proportional increase. S&P 500 was making record breaks and so was the Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin kept going until around 20,000. Unfortunately, I didn't sell, but I did sell, I think, one at 15,000, which was nice. 
And around the tops, it started to go down a little bit, which so did Bitcoin. However, S&P 500 kept its value up until around here. Uh, it looks like uh, November of 2018, which I remember very well. And then Bitcoin dropped quickly, and so did the S&P 500. This was, it started in November of 2018 and lasted until, I don't know, February. And then it started to skyrocket pretty quickly. Um, that's primarily due because the Federal Reserve kept the interest rates low. and uh, But at the same time, the Bitcoin started going up too. So as you can see, now Bitcoin hit a top before the uh, S&P 500 did because S&P 500 went down a little bit. So did Bitcoin. But then Bitcoin dropped even further and then it rose up just like the S&P 500, which hit its record highs for two or three days before COVID happened. And then the bottom fell out, but so did Bitcoin. And then it went back up and that's where we are now. I do need to adjust my left axis point because I believe the S&P 500 is breaking into new records and we'll discuss that when we get into the code. So the bottom line, though, is that the Bitcoin is not a hedge against the S&P 500. In fact, it's just a more volatile, um, you know, market that follows equities. So um, a better analysis to see what would be the better return on investment would be to do the percentage change. So I could change these to percentage change. I don't have that data here. And then we can see that, uh, and you could just see with your eyes because of how drastic it is, but basically Bitcoin is just a more volatile equities market. So if the stock market is plummeting, you might want to wait a little bit before investing because that means Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies is going to drop even more. However, if you think the stock market's going to go back up, uh, you might want to wait to sell until you think the S&P 500 is maybe hit and Bitcoin may keep going. Now, this is all unprecedented. One decade of info is not, in my opinion, the best way to judge a market. These might have other external influences like the interest rate, the national debt, government spending, and just the nation's belief of our economic system. And so some say Bitcoin is a hedge against our belief of our current economic system and nothing to do with the stock market. And there's no uh, cryptocurrency confidence index like there is the consumer confidence index. But nonetheless, this is not inversely proportional. In fact, it's um, proportional sort of, and it's just a more volatile equities market. So now that we've discussed that, let's go into the code. And in this video, we're only going to talk about the Bitcoin specific changes. You have to watch my other videos. I'll leave a link in the description so you can watch all of them. So we start off in these uh, download files and move files functions. Um, that is the same thing you've seen in the previous videos. So the last one, we went to Quandle and got this treasury yield. In, um, and then we added this blockchain M. KPRU, that's basically the Bitcoin price index. And then my Quando API is stored somewhere else because it, I do my YouTube videos, but it's free. And then we move the files by creating the source path. So first you tell Python where the file is located. And this is in my downloads folder. Then you tell, you, tell Python where you want the destination to be. So I want to rename it as well, Bitcoin price data space plus today and then you use this move dot function like we did with all the others from the source path in my downloads file to the data folder right so though that's the download files and the move files things and then this is how we formatted the s p 500 the yield curve the russell 2000 same thing with bitcoin we gave it a label we told it where the file is located at then we use pandas to read the CSV. Then we created a date time using the date column. So if we were to go into the data folder, you would see that this file from Quando actually only has two columns, a date and a value, value being the price. So we create the date time um, and then we sort the values by ascending just like we did all the others and basically you're just 
um, data matching so everything's the same way. So we leave our data frame with a date that's in the date time standard and ascending, just like we did with the others. Then we add our line for Bitcoin, just like we did the Russell 2000 yield curve. So this is the label. Then our X axis is the date. Our Y axis is the price or value. I colored it purple. And then I'm passing the label as the Bitcoin symbol, which we created up here, just Bitcoin. Okay, this is just a copy and paste of what we've already done, except you have to know what the um, Y value is. Then in our radio bun buttons um, class, we passed it this Bitcoin. So now there are three radio buttons. Then in our toggle function, I added a conditional statement, just like the other ones. I said, if the label equals Bitcoin, equals equals Bitcoin. Then I want to set the Y axis start at zero, end at 21,000. Now, as I discussed in my previous Matplotlib video, uh, it's not good to hard code values like this. So what I should have done is um, f use the data frame pandas to find the max value in the column and then maybe add 100, which is what I did here. And so, um, you know, in the future, as I get more data sets in, I need to change these Y limitations to uh, not be hard coded. Then we didn't have to change the um, other code. So basically, we still want it to toggle when we click the radio buttons, and we still want the default to be Russell 2000. And then we uh, did the plot show. So that's pretty much it. Bottom line, Bitcoin is not inversely proportional, uh, otherwise known as a hedge to the S&P 500. And we basically just added Bitcoin specific data to the code we've already created to create this chart. So I hope you like this video. I hope it's useful to any Bitcoin investor or potential Bitcoin investor. So please like the video. Please consider subscribing to my channel and uh, hit the notification bell so you get updates when I update the channel and um, leave a comment and let me know how you liked my introduction with my DSLR camera. All right. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.